The NCAA and Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions proudly present The Cardiac Kids. It's the 1983 Division I NCAA Basketball Championship from Albuquerque, New Mexico. All the color and excitement of NCAA basketball coming to its dramatic finale in the brilliant Southwest. Four teams from four separate conferences battling for the right to be called the national champion of collegiate basketball. From the Atlantic Coast Conference, it was North Carolina State, coached by the emotional Jim Valvano. And led by a trio of seniors, guards Derek Quittenberg and Sidney Lowe, and forward Thurl Bailey. From the Metro Conference, Denny Crum and the Louisville Cardinals were back again. They won the title in 1980 and made it to the Final Four in 1982. And from that 1980 title team, Scooter and Rodney McRae would get one more championship try. From the Southeastern Conference, Georgia was making its first trip to the Final Four. An unexpected visitor to Albuquerque. Fifth-year head coach Hugh Durham brings his lightning-quick Bulldogs into the semifinals, led by guard Fern Fleming, forward James Banks, and center Terry Fair. And from the Southwest Conference, the Houston Cougars, under the 27-year veteran Guy Lewis, try to keep their 25-game win streak alive with the help of Akeem Abdul Elijahwan and the slamming crew of Clyde Drexler, Michael Young, Larry Mishaw, and Benny Anders. The first semifinal game paired North Carolina State against Georgia. North Carolina State was the sixth seed in the West and defeated Pepperdine 69 to 67 in double overtime to advance to the second round where they came back against Nevada Las Vegas for a 71-70 victory and a chance to advance to the West Regional where the Wolfpack defeated Utah by 19, 75 to 56. And then it was the regional final, a 63-62 upset win over Virginia and Ralph Sampson. Georgia started as the fourth seed in the East and thus got a first round bye. The Bulldogs squeaked by Virginia Commonwealth 56-54 and just as narrowly defeated St. John's in the East Regional 70-67. And then the other ACC upset, an 82-77 victory over the 1982 champions, the North Carolina Tar Heels. The 1983 Final Four was about to begin. The opening tip controlled by Georgia's six foot seven Terry Fair. But that's about all the Bulldogs controlled in the opening minutes. As the Wolfpack's long range bomber, Derek Wittenberg, puts the first four points on the board. The pack was off and running. While Georgia showed its final four jitters, hitting just four of their first 23 shots and being out hustled on the boards by the much taller Wolfpack front line. Bulldog coach Hugh Durham knew that quickness was the answer to the team's early woes. And quick is the only word to describe Gerald Crosby as a six foot one guard strips the ball from Thurl Bailey and cuts the NC State lead to five, 19 to 14, with 535 remaining in the first half. But North Carolina State fought off the challenge. They broke the Bulldog double team, got the open outside shots, and control the inside as Thurl Bailey collected eight points and eight rebounds, giving NC State a 33 to 22 lead going into the locker room. For the Bulldogs, Hugh Durham knew that his squad would have to shoot a much better percentage than the 28% they shot in the first half to stay with the Wolfpack. And Jim Valvano was going to use tempo and his bigger front line for the final 20 minutes. What started as an 11-point halftime lead grew to a 14-point differential as Thurl Bailey puts the Wolf back up 39 to 25 with 17-27 remaining. Georgia was not about to let the lead get any larger. Gerald Crosby hits from 19 feet to cut NC State's lead to 12. Three minutes later, Georgia's pressure defense creates an NC State turnover. Donald Hardy off to Vern Fleming for a layup. And the score, North Carolina State 43, Georgia 33, and a shift in the final four momentum. 
With the altitude at 5,000 feet, everyone was tiring. But Georgia began to challenge the Wolf Pack inside. Terry Fair with the offensive rebound, creating what Hugh Durham wanted, but had not seen much of. The fast break. Reserve guard Donald Hardy kicks it out to James Banks, who lays it in and cuts the lead to eight. NC State 49, Georgia 41. 9.54 remaining in this first semifinal game, but the Georgia pressure defense begins to take its toll. The Bulldogs were tiring, and the Wolfpack was on the run. 10 straight NC State points. Sidney Lowe with one of his game-high 11 assists off to Thurl Bailey, and it's North Carolina State 57, and Georgia 41. And on the next possession, Lowe again to an open Bailey for two of his game-high 20 points, and Jim Valvano's club goes up by 18, 59 to 41, with 5.56 remaining. Georgia was not about to throw in the towel. A Richard Corrin tip-in off of a Gerald Crosby miss cuts the lead back to 13 with 3.09 to go. And then Crosby makes up for his miss with this steal. And the two-on-two -two Georgia break ends in a Fern Fleming layup. And it's 59-48 with two and a half minutes remaining. With the lead down to six and 1.27 left on the clock, Georgia takes its last timeout. Hugh Durham trying to choreograph a comeback that had whittled an 18-point lead back to six in just over four minutes. But there just wasn't enough time left. Thurl Bailey putting in the final bucket that gave NC State a 67-60 victory and a trip to the NCAA National Basketball Final. The Cardiac Kids were living up to their team of Destiny Billing. And for Georgia, only the second team ever to make a Final Four appearance in their first NCAA tournament. It would be wait until next year. The buildup of the second semifinal game was so high, and it was evident that both teams' anxiety levels were just as intense. Houston's road to Albuquerque was a bit easier than most. As the number one seed in the Midwest, Houston received a first round bye. The Cougars defeated Maryland by 10, 60 to 50 in the second round, and got by Memphis State, 70 to 63 in the Midwest Regional. Then in the final, Houston stung Villanova and came away with an 18-point victory and a trip to New Mexico. As the number one seed in the Mideast, Louisville also received a first round bye. The Cardinals trounced Tennessee by 13, 70 to 57 in the second round and just did get by Arkansas, 65 to 63 in the regional semifinal. And then in the regional final, in-state rival Kentucky could not stop the Cardinals in an emotional packed game. Louisville won in overtime, 80 to 68. Run and gun was almost too mild a term to describe the start of this second semifinal game. The first half was a slam dunking, seesaw battle of super athletes. In the first seven minutes, there were six ties and a flashy style of play that could only be outdone by what was to follow. With Houston up by four, 16 to 12, Louisville did their version of tinkers to Evers to Chance as Milt Wagner passes to Scooter McRae, whose touch pass to Charles Jones cuts the Cougar lead to two. On the Cardinals' next possession, Scooter McRae's turnaround jumper is off. His brother controls a rebound, only to have Akeem Olajuwon start the Houston fast break with a block retrieved by Michael Young. Young goes the length of the court, feeds to Clyde Drexler, who jams home his eighth point. Houston is back on top by four, 18 to 14. For Louisville, Milt Wagner was their first half standout, scoring 16 points in the first 20 minutes, mostly from the outside. But Wagner had the inside moves as well, gliding by Reed Geddes and tying the score at 24 with 7.46 to go in the first half.
The athletes were putting on quite a show in Albuquerque. Akeem the Dream gets a piece of a Milt Wagner shot, and Alvin Franklin leads the Cougar break one more time. He sees Clyde Drexler, who literally powers through freshman Billy Thompson, and the game is tied for the 10th time at 34, with 3-11 left in the first half. With Louisville ahead, Houston went to their force in the middle, Akeem. Clyde Drexler feeds the big man, whose soft touch brought the Cougars within two, 38 to 36. And in an eye for an eye fashion, Scooter McRae, off of a perfect Milt Wagner touch pass, jams it over Akeem, and the Louisville lead is back to four. Scooter McRae picks off an Alvin Franklin pass, only to have the infamous checkered towel of Guy Lewis tossed into his path. A reaction of frustration that cost Guy Lewis a technical foul and gave Louisville a five point, 41 to 36 lead going into the locker room. Denny Crum's Cardinals had the final four experience on their side going into the final 20 minutes. But Houston had the bench and the blowout potential that had led to 25 straight wins. The Cougars came out roaring in the second half. They weren't about to let their chances for an NCAA final appearance slip by. Here, four Houston shot opportunities. First by Drexler, then by Elijah Wan, and then two more by Drexler, off of a very aggressive Cardinal defense, cutting the lead to three, 41 to 38. And one minute later, with 16.43 remaining, Michael Young puts Houston ahead for the first time in 10 and a half minutes. Houston, 43, Louisville, 41. But Louisville stormed right back. On one end of the court, it was Scooter McRae battling Akeem. And on the other end of the court, it was the second half of the brother combo. Rodney McRae, who jams home this pass from Lancaster Gordon, nodding the score at 43 with 16.43 remaining. Then two minutes later, it's Charles Jones feeding a wide open Scooter McRae who makes his point clear. And it's now Louisville 51, Houston 45, 14.43 remaining. Momentum had begun to shift towards the Cardinals and Houston ran into even more misfortune as Larry Mishaw fouled out charging into Charles Jones with 13.28 still left. But then the jammas of Phi Slamma awoke. Michael Young off of a Drexler alley-oop. The lead is six. Houston 51, Louisville 57. Clyde Drexler off of the fast break. Houston 53, Louisville 57. Then it was Benny Anders' turn, making the steal. Getting the right angle and the right stuff. Houston, 55, Louisville, 57. A minute and a half later, Anders feeds Clyde Drexler for what would become the slam of the game. A double pumping two-hander. Houston, 60, Louisville, 57. For Louisville fans, smiles were not coming easy, and neither were they for the Cardinal huddle, as Danny Crum called his second timeout. Down by eight, 58-66, with 9.07 remaining. Seven minutes later, a key steal by Scooter McRae. He feeds to Lancaster Gordon, who takes it right at Akeem. The Cougar lead is down to six, 82-76, with 2.25 to go. But that's as close as Louisville could come. Akeem with 21 points, 22 rebounds, and eight block shots makes the score 88 to 80. And then Benny Anders with a slam dunk. Houston 90, Louisville 80. Then the final touch as if it were rehearsed time and time again. Akeem with the block. And Michael Young with a lofty layup at the buzzer. Houston goes to the NCAA basketball finals for the first time in their history as they defeat a very talented Louisville squad, 94 to 81.
The final game had been labeled a battle of David versus Goliath. Everyone felt that Jim Valvano's wolf pack would be no match for the superhuman doctors of dunk from Houston. But both head coaches saw it differently. We've been an outside shooting team all year. We've lived and died with the jump shot. I don't think all of a sudden we're going to say, fellas, I got a great idea. Let's throw it inside all night. We'll try to put a little pressure on the ball. We'll try to uh, contain their good scores. And we'll try to move them up and down the floor. Hopefully, we can draw some fouls, because uh, we, need, uh, we need them to get foul trouble, to be honest with you. Key is to get rebounds. Usually, the team that wins a rebound in war wins the game. We have one more slogan, though, that we add to that. The team with the most dunks wins the game. We're so close to having a game which could go, you know, blow out city. We may be from the country, but we're not easily conned. As the ball went in the air for the opening tip, the experts predicted that Jim Valvano would have his cardiac kids take the air out of the ball to control the tempo, but right off the bat, it was clear that Valvano's strategy was to attack. After missed shots at both ends of the floor, Kozell McQueen snagged this offensive rebound off of Thurl Bailey's shot. Then over to Sidney Lowe for a 20-footer. Lowe's shot was off but close enough for Thurl Bailey to slam it home and give NC State a two to nothing lead. After a Houston turnover, Derek Quittenberg came back with a shot just a bit off the mark, but Lorenzo Charles had the inside edge and gave State a surprising four to nothing lead. Then another Cougar turnover gave NC State the chance to go up six to nothing. A chance Thurl Bailey gladly capitalized on. But the Cougars quickly put some numbers in their scoring column with the patented smooth moves of Clyde Drexler. And the inside finesse of Larry Misha. Guy Lewis's kids were on the move, playing a fast break style that NC State had to stop. After down six to nothing, Houston comes back to take its first lead as Michael Young gets his own rebound and puts in the follow-up, giving the Cougars a one-point edge at seven to six. The Houston surge was not just a product of good offense. Their tenacious defense forced the Wolfpack into a four-minute scoring void. But even though NC State was having their hands full of the Cougar defense, Houston was also having a tough time converting, here missing on four inside attempts. With just under 9.30 left in the first half and NC State leading 12-11, the big men for both teams started their moves. Thurl Bailey goes over Elijah Wan for two. But then Elijah Wan does the same on the next possession. But the inside game of the pack was limited, as Akeem the Dream often never left his feet to block the Wolf Pack shots. Realizing the force was inside, Balvano had his troops try it from the outside. And no better choice than dead-eye Terry Gannon, who hit 59% from the ACC 19-foot three-point line during the season. Gannon, with this basket, gave NC State a 5-point, 20-15 lead with 6-15 remaining in the first half. But soon, the big men took control again. Houston's Elijah Wan was able to break loose upon the realization that Derek Wittenberg was a weak link in state's zone defense. On the other end of the court, Thurl Bailey showed his flair for the jumper with two quick outside releases, one from the wing, and another off a quick outlet pass from Kozell McQueen. This one gave the Wolfpack a 7-point, 26-19 lead with 3.46 left in the half. With 2.47 left in the first half, All-American forward Clyde Drexler picks up his fourth foul, a costly mishap that would force Drexler to stay on the bench much of the second half. 
and as time expired in the first half of this NCAA championship game, NC State had a surprising 33 to 25 lead. The start of the second half became a story of momentum. Houston came out with a new starting lineup. Drexler, with four personal fouls, was on the bench, along with fellow starter Larry Mishaw. In their places came six foot five sophomore Benny Anders and a six seven senior Brian Williams. And right away, Anders lit up the scoreboard, cutting the Wolfpack lead to six. Houston's full court man to man pressure defense forced a Wolfpack turnover, and it was Anders again. This time driving through the lane, getting his ninth point and cutting State's lead to four, 33 to 29. All of a sudden, it appeared as if the momentum was shifting towards Texas as the Southwest Conference champions cut the lead to two as the force, Akeem the Dream, made his second half presence known with a key rebound and an even more important inside score. Jim Valvano wisely called a timeout to regroup with 17.45 to go but it appeared that the break in the action could not stop the Cougar run. NC State's Lorenzo Charles was denied the inside. And on the other end, Akeem was the man again, nodding the score at 33, the second tie of this championship game. NC State needed a quick basket to regain the lead they had for almost 20 minutes. But Derek Wittenberg turns the ball over, and it's the Houston fast break. Ending with an Alvin Franklin score, the 10th straight Houston point. Houston, 35, North Carolina State, 33. Elijah Wan looked invincible on defense, guarding the inside and creating the fast break. And offensively, with his soft touch, this time increasing Houston's lead by three, 38 to 35. And after Michael Young gave Houston a five point lead at 40 to 35, Jim Valvano had to use another timeout. He had to do something about Houston's second half 15-2 scoring tear and a 12-2 rebound edge. Everyone was tired, especially Elijah Wan, who came out to catch his breath at the 10:04 mark. With Elijah Wan gone, Houston went to a spread offense, but the spread offense might have been the spark that ignited the Wolfpack backcourt. As Sidney Lowe sneaks the ball away from Larry Michaud, and the pack is off and running. It's Sidney Lowe. Off to Derek Wittenberg for one of his patented 22-footers. Houston, 42, North Carolina State, 37. After Reed Geddes' field goal, it was Derek Wittenberg again. His first try is short, but Kozel McQueen dishes it back out. And this time, Wittenberg's 16-footer is good. Houston, 42, North Carolina State, 37. Derek Wittenberg with all six of the Wolfpack's second half points. The momentum was beginning to shift, and Houston was easing up a little too soon as Sidney Lowe makes his second steal in a minute and a half. Terry Gannon is fouled by Geddes. A sharpshooting guard hits on one of two free throws, cutting the Houston lead to four, 44 to 40, with 7.38 to go. Then on Houston's next possession, another turnover. Gannon knocks the ball out of Benny Anders' hands and off his knee, North Carolina State ball. Terry Gannon gives Sidney Lowe a 20-foot opportunity, and the veteran guard connects, pulling the Wolf Pack within two. 44 to 42 with 626 to go. And at the 343 mark, with Houston up by six, 50 to 44, Balvano instructed his kids to foul. Make Houston win at the free throw line. After a Sidney Lowe basket cuts the margin to four, Clyde Drexler is fouled. Drexler hits both ends of a one-and-one. One. But Lowe comes back and keeps NC State within four, hitting his third straight shot. 
and it's Houston 52, North Carolina State 48. On the inbounds, Lorenzo Charles fouls Michael Young, sending the 67% free throw shooter to the line for one and one. A miss. And North Carolina State can cut the lead to two with 2.55 remaining in the championship game. Wittenberg drives inside, unsuccessfully challenging Elijah Wan, who throws an errant outlet pass. Recovered by Sidney Lowe, who sees his backcourt partner of seven years, Derek Wittenberg, open in the corner. A 22-footer that's all net. A two-point game. Houston 52, North Carolina State 50. Houston's ball. Clyde Drexler brings it up the floor. Over to Michael Young, who feeds it to Elijah Wan. His seven-footer is off the mark, and NC State has a chance to tie. They led by eight at halftime and fell behind by as much as seven in the second half. And now Sidney Lowe feeds to Wittenberg one more time. 23 feet away and the score is tied at 52 with 159 remaining. It's foul time again and this time it's Franklin. Wittenberg goes for the ball and it sends a 63% free throw shooting freshman to the line for a one and one with 105 remaining. Unbelievable tension, insurmountable pressure. The shot misses and North Carolina State controls the rebound. Two timeouts left for NC State and Jim Valvano uses one with 44 seconds left. Both coaches planning their final strategies, hoping to win the coveted title, the 1983 NCAA Basketball Championship. North Carolina State plays four corners, going for the last shot. Nothing seems to be open. Seven seconds left. Derek Wittenberg sends up a prayer. And it's answered by Lorenzo Charles. North Carolina State wins 54-52. The Cardiac Kids are the 1983 NCAA basketball champions. What the experts said would never happen did. David defeated Goliath. And with Goliath's own weapon, the Duck. This NCAA Division I basketball championship film has been a presentation of the NCAA and Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions. Transportation for this NCAA championship film provided by Eastern Airlines, America's favorite way to fly.